How's it going, fam? It's Erica with Not Your Average GDC, and today we are going to talk about the Emerson Mini A100 and Emerson as a knife company in general. This is going to be kind of like a laid-back video. We're just going to chat. This is something you can put on in the background if you're uh, taking a shower or drinking a beer or something. I'm not going to be showing too much. This is mostly just conversation, okay? So, the other day, Jared Neves, um, a, a very cool guy, posted a video about his new Emerson A100 that he got. And I was kind of surprised by the video because... Um, he, he has a channel that's like completely oversaturated with um, the same Chinese knives like over and over and over and over again it, You know, it's his job like I'm not I'm not um, Condemning him for that like that's literally his job is to like get in a lot of you know The Kaisers and the Wii's and the Civivis and review them and stuff um, So I was so surprised to see like his thumbnail as an Emerson box so I instantly clicked on the video uh, and um, yeah, he got a an Emerson a 100 and I just so happened to like look through the comments for a few minutes because I was curious to see what his audience thought of that. And go figure, kind of what I thought. Um, people were kind of crapping on him, honestly. They were kind of, um, you, you know, crapping on Emerson as a company. One person was even like, it sounds like you're trying to convince yourself that you like this. Um, a lot of people were just like absolutely annihilating Emerson as a company. The price point, the build quality, the G10, all of that stuff. Um, people just were like, nope, would never spend that much money on an Emerson, they're garbage, right? The same, the same peanut gallery that we have been hearing for years now, right? So I just wanted to talk about Emerson knives and this knife a little bit today because you guys know I, I love Emerson knives, I love the Mini A100, this is my absolute, uh, favorite hard use knife, I have continuously praised it on the channel over and over again i will probably never stop and it's one of those like if you know you know things i have friends that watch the channel that got emerson mini a100s because i like it and they were like oh my god i can't believe i um you know waited so long to try one of these like if if you know you know type deal so let's talk about the issues that people have with Emerson and why they're completely ridiculous, in my opinion, okay? So, the main complaints that we have been hearing for Eternity now are the fit and finish is crap, um, the blades are too thick, the scales are too rough, and they're chisel ground, and we don't like the price point, and we don't like the steel choice, and we don't like the hardness, okay? Um, so... It's just, uh, and they don't cut straight. All of this ridiculous stuff. I will say, back in the day, we're talking, let's say, seven years ago, probably, Emerson's from seven years ago and backward were not well made. They had issues. Oh, and then people say that they have lockstick and gritty action and the lockup is too late. So basically, actually, people hate every single thing about Emerson's, now that I think about it. <laughs> now that I'm making the laundry list. Um... So, way back in the day, they were not to the highest quality. We know that, right? They're very different now. There have been massive changes in the construction of these knives and the build quality, all that stuff has been changed. But people are still parroting the same crap that we heard seven years ago uh, because that's what people do. So, let's... Let's look at this, because I am confused as to why people won't just shut the fuck up about it and, like, either try one or just, or just like, stop. Because Emerson isn't trying to pull the wool over your eyes. And that's why I think you just need to stop talking. Because they're not trying to market you. Emerson is not trying to market you this. And they're not trying to market you this. They're not lying to you. And they have never said that this is their goal. So stop bitching. Okay? It'd be different if the, if Emerson as a company was telling you that this was going to be this. That'd be one thing. If we were lying. Or if it was said that this was the goal. <laughs> and you got this. That'd be fucked up. That has never been said. Ernest has literally specifically said, this right here is his goal. That is what he's trying to sell you. And that's why I appreciate him so much. So, let's look at this. Emerson's have thick blade stocks. Why? Because they are 
marketed as multi-tools. If you go on the website, and if you listen to Ernest speak, he wants you to be able to use this as a multi-tool, as a light prying tool, maybe a screwdriver, a beater. He literally says that his knives are famous in, you know, the worst parts of the world because they're not really knives. Uh, they're they're multi-tools. We know that. Um, are they chisel ground? Yes. Why? Ease of maintenance in the field. I know that nobody believes in that anymore, but coming from a blue collar background, I can say that using a chisel ground knife, especially in a blue collar field, can be very convenient. So if you are not a blue collar worker that uses your knife as a multi-tool, of course you're going to hate this. So I feel like it's silly to be judging if it literally isn't for you. Right? This wasn't built for you, so just so just stop. It's built for someone like me. Just like it'd be silly for me to get in a, in a Ferrari and, you know, press the gas and it goes fucking flying and then I say, Oh, that was fucked up. This car is way too fast for me. Like, this is, this, this is fucked up. Like, no, that car is not made for me because I'm a pussy. I like trucks. It, you, can't, you can't jump into a different world and then shit on it just because it's not for you. People don't like the G10. It's too rough. If you literally stop crying and give it a couple weeks to break in, it's way smoother. This G10 is smoother than my Para 3 G10. Because I gave it a little time to smooth out. And if you think that it's too rough, just take a little bit of sandpaper to it. It's not that big of a deal. It's not like that roughness lasts forever. The friction of actually using this, carrying it, stuff like that, makes it much smoother. This is not super rough anymore at all. It's actually quite nice. It's very smooth. And like I said, sandpaper, literally. Whoosh, whoosh, piece of cake. Throw a little oil, light sanding, you're fine. Everything's fine, okay? We don't like the steel. We don't like 154 cm. Well, that's weird because I see 154cm being pumped out of Chinese knives and y'all jump on them because they're fidgety. But now, if it's, if it's American 154cm that's thick and specifically made to be like a multi-tool, we don't like it anymore because 154cm is garbage. It's for ease of maintenance, guys. Ease of sharpening. This won't chip on you in the field. It's a field knife, okay? It's not really meant to be like the best um the best hollow ground slicer ever right it's meant to be fixed easily so 154 cm is actually a really decent steel and i have a great edge on this and it lasts a decent amount of time and i really appreciate how forgiving this steel is and um i have never had an issue with it at all and i really kind of beat the crap out of my knives i have a video of me taking this knife and literally using it as a wood chisel and like taking a hammer on the back of it and chiseling wood with it. <laughs> very easily maintained after it didn't it didn't chip, it didn't roll, nothing. It was it's just very forgiving. Well, we don't like the fit and finish. The fit and finish is garbage. And they're not centered and the action is crap and everything's crap. It feels cheap. Okay. Well, if you are expecting the knife to feel like this, then yeah, I guess it would feel a little cheap. Maybe even if you're expecting it to feel like this, it could feel cheap. I'm not seeing any fit and finish issues on this. I, this is, I've had three mini A100s. I've had the mini CQC7. I've had the mini Sheepdog. I've, I've had actually a decent amount of Emersons come through. Um, the mini Commander and the Micro Commander. I'll be honest, none of them had fit and finish issues at all. None of them. Perfectly centered. Fantastic action. I don't, I'm not seeing the fit and finish issues anymore. Um, I feel that this is perfectly centered. If we look, come on, focus. Perfectly centered. Obviously you can fiddle with it if you want. It has great action. Well, it has Nylatron washers. Yeah, but they're, they're literally like made by NASA. Like they're literally like space grade silicone impregnated washers that that are built to push dirt and debris out if you get it in there. Like, do you know how cool that is? You don't even have to clean this thing in the field. The, the washers are literally made and impregnated with silicone so that they actually, as you use it, push 
all the debris out for you so that it's super easy to clean. Like you can just blow air through it and it's fine. That's really cool. And the action, you can't complain about the action because it's great. I've had so many Emersons. This is very smooth. Very, very smooth. If you don't like the copper infused grease, just wipe it off. Look, it's so smooth. I have mine like this, this, um, I can adjust it so that it literally like swings shut right now. I, I kind of like the hydraulic action. So I have it like, you know, perfectly where I like it, like kind of smooth, slow roll type action. Okay. Well, they have lock stick. Again, it's so slight. I, it's never been an issue for me ever. I don't like this kind of clicks a little bit when I close it. Like you kind of hear it, but it, it has never stuck for me. It's been, never been an issue. It's just like a little click. Just a little click. That's all. Well, the lock up is way too late. I don't trust the lock. I don't know. I feel like this after I've had this for years and years and years, literally hammered on the back of it. I feel like that's not a late lock up whatsoever. I feel like that's very acceptable. Yeah, well, as you use it, it'll get too late and then you're screwed. Well, good thing Emerson has a great warranty. And if this ever does walk its way over way too far where it needs to be fixed, I literally just send the knife in and I get taken care of. Well, they're overpriced. Okay. Let's look at it this way. We have two kind of tiers of American made knives. We have Chris Reeve quality where everything is made in the U S okay. And extremely tight tolerances and perfection. As much as I hate Medford knives, um, same thing. We've got, you know, Chris Reeve and we've got Medford, you know, there are others too. Um, but let's just say Chris Reeve and Medford at the very top with very good tolerances and fit and finish and quality. Okay. And American made, um, hardware, all that good stuff. But you're looking at 500 plus dollars. Okay. 500 plus dollars for this realm of an American made knife. If we decrease by half of the price, this is what we're getting from one of the companies. We're getting a very well-made, reliable, heavy duty knife with all American made and assembled parts, hardware, liners, everything USA made, not, not made overseas and assembled here made. Okay. So 100% made in the USA, 100% made in the USA for half the price. We're looking at what, I, I don't know, I would figure like $230 maybe right now. I'm not, and that's shipped. Something like that. Does it feel overpriced? It could to some people, it could. Um, I'm just throwing this out there. And I will say, Emerson's been through a lot. If you don't understand the history of their knives or the history of what Ernest had to go through, then yeah, you're not going to understand. But maybe like do a little bit of research before you're, you know, joining Peanut Gallery and screaming that Emerson's suck and they're not worth the money. Ernest had to pull his knives from all of the dealers that he used to be able to sell through Blade HQ, DLT, um, every, every place, you know, all of the big knife center, all that. He had to pull from all of the dealers a couple years ago because he lost his workers during the pandemic and he could not keep up with the demand and he, you know, decided that he had to sell only from his own store because he could not keep up. That's a huge hit. And right after that, he figured out that one of his employees, um, I won't go into details, but he did make a video about this. Like, you can just watch it. Um, one of his employees was essentially stealing from the company for a very long time and it financially was a a burden that was figured out right after so they took a double whammy real quick on top of the economy being garbage and all of that stuff like like i said Ernest sat down and made like a face-to-face -face video about this explaining what happened so just go watch that like it'll explain more but 
those are some pretty hard hits to take. And, you know, I've just noticed that some companies have, when, when, the, when tough times come up, they're very quick to jump overseas and be like, well, you know, this happened and we, we have to go overseas, you know, that's where we got to make stuff. Um, and nobody bats an eye, but Ernest, uh, you know, makes decisions that are best for his company to support his family and his workers and to still give us knives at the, br the best price that he can. And people are losing their minds. You know what I'm saying? It just seems super hypocritical. It really does. I know that these are not fidgety. I know that in hand, if you are used to these, then maybe this feels out of place and you don't understand it. I get it if you don't understand what Ernest's mission is. But there are no lies. There, There's no wool being pulled over your eyes. There's no hidden nothing he markets these as beater multi-tools that you can send in if you break that you're allowed to modify without voiding the warranty that is 100 percent american made and you know no compromises and if you don't understand that and you don't appreciate it that's fine but don't go um pushing other customers away from his products because it doesn't fit your bill right We've had people do way worse in the community and, and, you know, we talk about it for a week and then we forget and everyone's buying the fucking shit again. Like the Jake Hoback stuff and, um, you know, I just, uh, it's just very surprising to me that we have a really good person in the community, an old timer too. Like Ernest is old and he's done a lot for the knife community and it is so appalling and disrespectful in my opinion to be going on other people's videos where they actually seem to like the product and you're trying to convince them that that they don't because you don't like it that's like crazy to me it'd be like i said it would be one thing if it were a controversy of lies then yes spread your truth but that's not the case here this knife is just not for you and it's not fidgety enough and it's not um, clean enough and light enough and thin enough and slicey enough for your Amazon package cutting that you are trying to get everyone else to hate them too and to convince a a public influencer that he doesn't like the knife that he bought with his own money from the factory like give me a break I just that one that one kind of got me going because like I said Ernest seems like a very nice guy he has done a lot for the community his daughter megan i used to talk to pretty often when i had the instagram page she was always a doll to me emerson has sent me stuff for giveaways um they it's just a really cool company and they're making hard use american-made knives for us to just thrash on and have fun with and I, and I think it's really a bummer when people start to flow in from the saturated Chinese knives fanboys and they're like, fuck the Emersons, fuck the Emersons, they're shit, they're not fidgety enough and they're too thick and you can't like that. You can't, sounds like you're convincing yourself. Like, just stop. Just stop. <laughs> okay? Emersons have a place. They really do. Give them a chance. I love my Mini A100. I have used this for a lot of stuff. It has never failed me. Not to say that they can't fail. Any knife can fail, guys. Really, any knife can fail, can not fit the bill. But let's just be realistic about um, where, we're, where we're going with the things that we say, okay? That's all I want. Hell, this fucking Chris Reeve even clicks when I open it up. Like, did you hear that? I hope you can hear that. It, it clicks a little bit. So what? I've even had Omega Springs click when I pull them back sometimes. It just happens. This one doesn't. Th this one is like loosey-goosey. <laughs> I don't know. Just my two cents. That's all. I, I like Emerson's. I hope that maybe this changes your mind a little bit. And I do have an old video. I think it's called like Emerson Knives 101 or something that really goes in depth about Emerson Knives, the history earnest the materials the sourcing why they're made the way they are i have a video kind of explaining all of that if you're looking for a more in-depth version of this video this was more or less a conversation piece and just giving some feedback on 
that video that I had witnessed. But um, yeah, go back and watch that video if you want more information or just ask it down in the comments. Um, somebody might be able to answer you that somebody may or may not be me. Um, we'll see. We'll see what mood I'm in. <laughs> uh, yeah, guys, that's about it for today. I love you. Go use your shit. Maybe try out a mini A100. Because they're awesome. Focus. Come on. This freaking camera. Um, yeah, maybe try out a mini A100 or an Emerson. Oh, actually, before I go, I had one more thing. I, I did... I've had this question a lot of times, and I and I think I saw it in the comments on that other video as well. Um, somebody was like, what do you like better, the Mini A100 or the 940? Because they're both, like, hard use, thick, overbuilt, sturdy, but lack of ergonomic knife models. I've made videos on this before. Uh, which one do I like better? Neither. They're not... They're only comparable because they're hard use, slimline knives. This doesn't sound super realistic, but, like, just save some money. I would get both. Genuinely. I think they offer two totally different realms of hard use. If I could opt for you to try both, that's what I would do. I genuinely cannot pick one because they're two totally different animals in the hard use family. They're really... They both offer very special attributes, and I really can't pick one, one that I would uh, like over the other... Look at them. They're so beautiful together. These guys are best friends. They've been best friends since they met. So if you're if you're able, just try both. Save up your money. Buy on the secondary. Borrow from a friend. Ask around. Try both because they're both phenomenal. And I could never, ever sleep at night if I did not have both of these in my collection. Okay? All right, now I'm really going to go. Go use your shit. Learn how to sharpen your knives. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this. Sorry if it was spicy. I'm in a spicy mood. It is what it is. I love you guys very much. I will see you on the next video. Take care.